everyone. This is Shantini from Edureka and today's session is about an amazing utility of TensorFlow that allows you to visualize data and how it behaves. It is called as TensorBoard. You will see for what sort of purposes you can use it when training a neural network. So let's begin. Machine learning is a complex discipline, but implementing machine learning models is far less daunting and difficult than it used to be. Thanks to the machine learning frameworks such as Google's TensorFlow that ease the process of acquiring data, training models, serving predictions and refining future results. It is an open source library for numerical computation and large scale machine learning. Now TensorFlow bundles together a slew of machine learning and deep learning models and algorithms and makes them useful by way of a common metaphor. It can train and run deep neural networks for handwritten digit classification and image recognition. Now TensorFlow calculations are performed in the context of a computational graph. To communicate the structure of your network and to check it for complicated networks, it is useful to be able to visualize the computational graph. Now for that we have the tensor board that visualizes the training parameters, metrics, hyperparameters or any statistics of neural network. Now visualizing the graph of the network is very straightforward in TensorBoard. To do so, all that is required is to build your network, create a session and then create a TensorFlow file writer object. And this is how a TensorBoard looks like. So now let's have a look at the different views of TensorBoard. The different views take inputs of different formats and display them differently. You can also change them on the orange top bar. The first one is scalars. It visualizes the scalar values such as classification accuracy. Now graph visualizes the computational graph of the model such as the neural network model. Next up distributions visualize how data changes over time such as the weights of a neural network. Histograms provide a fancier view of the distribution that shows distributions in a three dimensional perspective. The image and the audio are used for visualizing image and audio data. Final one is the text that is used for visualizing the text data. Now one way to quickly detect problems with your model is to have a graphical visualization of what is going on in your model in real time. So if your model is behaving oddly, it will be clearly visible. That is exactly what TensorBoard provides you with. You can decide which values need to be displayed and it will maintain a real time visualization of those values during learning. So now let's have a look at the steps involved in the working of a tensor board. First up is the setup. So first we have to install TensorFlow. Now installing TensorFlow via pip automatically installs TensorBoard. Next up we have to serialize the data. Now TensorBoard operates by reading TensorFlow event files which contain summary data that you can generate when running TensorFlow. So first we have to create the TensorFlow graph that we would like to collect summary data from and decide which nodes you would like to annotate. Now once the serializing of the data is done, the final step is to launch the TensorBoard. Now once the TensorBoard is running, we just have to navigate the web browser to the local host 6006 to view the TensorBoard. Now when looking at TensorBoard, you will see the navigation tabs in the top right corner where each tab represents a set of serialized data that can be visualized. So this was all about the different steps involved in working of a TensorBoard and all the different views of TensorBoard. Now let us have a look at how it actually works and what is the code behind making a TensorBoard work. So we begin with importing all the packages that we will need here. So we're using the future import print function because it ensures compatibility in Python version 3 and 2. Now we are importing the TensorFlow here, which will automatically import the TensorBoard as well. Next up, we will import the MNIST data. Now we are starting by creating a five layer neural network that we will use to classify handwritten digit images. For that, we will use the famous MNIST data set. Now TensorFlow provides a simple API to load MNIST data, so we don't have to manually download it. Now moving on, we will set up the parameters that we require for the TensorBoard. So here we have set up our learning rate as 0.01 and we will be training 25 epochs here. We have set our batch size as 100. Now moving on, we will set up our data image or the size of the image in the graph. So here we assign it a shape of 784 where it is the dimensionality of a single flattened 28 by 28 pixel MNIST image. 
and the none indicates that the first dimension corresponding to the batch size can be of any size. Now MNIST has images of size 28 into 28, which will be 784 when unwrapped to a single dimension. Then we can define the input and the label placeholders that we will later use to train the model. So here we have our input data and the label data for the following. Now finally we will define two tensorflow variables for each layer that is the weights and bias. So here we have defined our weights and bias. Now when the input or the output placeholders weights and biases of each layer defined, we can now define the calculations to calculate the log its of the neural network. Now the log its are the unnormalized values produced in the last layer of the neural network. When normalized, we call them predictions. Now this involves iterating through each layer in the neural network. So here we are constructing our model and encapsulating all the ops into the scope. So here we are calculating our X axis using the weight and the bias. Now we will also need to apply an activation function for all layers except for the last one. Now next we will define the loss function that is used to optimize the neural network. So in this example, you can use the cross entropy loss, which often delivers better results in classification problems than the mean squared error. We also have our gradient descent and accuracy function here. We will need to define an optimizer that takes in the loss and updates the weights of the neural network in the direction that minimizes the loss. Now we will initialize our variables and create a summary to monitor the cost tensor. So there are several different types of summaries. Here as you are visualizing only scalars, you can define the tf.summary.scalar objects. Now for the loss summary, you feed in a value by means of a placeholder whenever you need to publish this to the board. And for accuracy, you feed in a value by means of a placeholder whenever you need to publish this to the board. Now in the code below, we will do the following. First, we will create a session in which we will execute the operations defined above. Then we will create a folder for saving the summary data. Next, we will also create a summary writer and initialize all the variables. Now this will be followed by loading the MNIST data. Now once this is done, we will start with our training session. For each epoch and each batch in the training data, we will first execute the summary and then we will write it to the event file with the summary writer. Now we can execute the model optimization and loss calculation. Now after we go through the full training data set for a single epoch, we will calculate the average training loss. Now we follow a similar treatment for the validation data set as well. Especially for each batch in the validation data, we will calculate the validation accuracy. Thereafter, we will calculate the average validation accuracy for full validation set. Now finally, the testing phase is executed. In this, for each batch in the test data, we will calculate test accuracy for each batch. With that, we will calculate the average test accuracy for the full test set. Now at the very end, we will execute the performance summaries and write them to the event file with the summary writer. So here we have optimized our summary writer and then finally we will be writing them to the event file. Now with this, we have come to the end of our training the data. Here we will be testing our model. So once the optimization is over, now we will run the code and see how it actually works. So once we run our code, we will have our MNIST data and then we will be able to see that all the epochs are being trained. So now once the training of our epochs are completed, we have to run this command line for the tensor board to work. Now once this is done, we can open the local host 6006 and check out for our tensor board. So let's just get into the local host 6006 and we will be able to see our tensor board here. So you can see that this is provided with the graphs, the scalar graphs with all the values that we have added in our MNIST data set. These are all the scalar values that we have added in the graphs and we can also check out the graph here, which includes the loss, accuracy, SGD, model, weights and bias that were all included in our MNIST data set. So this is exactly how a tensor board makes the visualization easier in TensorFlow. Whenever we are using any graph or any scalar function in our TensorFlow, it is better to use a tensor board for a clear understanding of your graphs.
This provides you with a better understanding of all the X and Y values of the graph that you have provided in your program and how it is actually visualized. So I hope you have understood how TensorBoard works and how you can use it for a better visualization of your graphs. So this was all about today's session. Do let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!